Hey everybody, Fishman here, welcome to another video. This is part two for the brass air pump build. And if you remember from part one, I had roughed out one of the pistons that's gonna fit in the cylinder, so it's a, a good fit inside there. But I wasn't entirely sure whether I wanted to go with that style of fit or go with a, an O-ring style. So I left one of the two pistons uh, as a blank, this one here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a groove in it and I'm going to fit on an O-ring so that it just snugly fits inside. And I'm going to lubricate it up and see which I prefer more. Uh, again, I'm not really entirely sure. They both have merits. Um, but as we go along, I will eventually have to make a decision. So the one on the left has been cut down to roughly the dimensions I need as far as length and stuff goes. But again, that'll all be changed depending upon the stroke of the... Anyway, let's not get too complicated into that right now. That is where the O-ring is going to fit in a finished piston. But to test it out, I'm going to use the blank because I can always just turn this one down to the size of the other one if I decide to go the friction fit route. Or I can turn down the other side and put a groove in this one if I decide to go the O-ring route. Now I left it a little bit oversized, as you can see here, it's a very snug fit, but I'm going to put some lubricant on it and fit it in, and it does actually move quite nicely, but it does give me one more uh, wear and tear part. Now the solid brass piston with some thicker lubricant uh, eliminates the wear and tear part, but that thicker lubricant could end up causing issues with the valve. So I'm, like I said, I have no idea which way I'm going to go just yet. But again, that's not a decision I need to make right now. I just wanted to test it out. And then now that I've actually had it in my hands and I've worked with it, you can see it moves quite nicely this way. And it still, it still has a bit of room to be uh, turned down inside there just to get it to be a little more loose. I suspect the O-ring will give uh, less of a problem with gas escaping. This one might be a bit more of an issue that way. So like I said, there's pros and cons for both of them. Now, I'm not sure why I put this the pine oil on here because it moved really smoothly in there to begin with. Uh, again, it's just testing things out. So what I want to do today is move on to the most important part of this build, and that is the valves. Now, if you remember the cap I had made for the cylinder last week, it's going to have... Uh, one main hole which fits into the cylinder and then one that goes up and one goes down for uh, where the valves are going to sit. Now I don't want to get too much into how they're going to work because uh, it'll become clearer by the end of the video. So I'll leave most of that description till then. But if you have taken uh, an air pump apart, like a standard small commercial air pump, You'll notice that most of them work off of flapper valves and have some form of diaphragm that it vibrates in and out. And that is how uh, the air is sucked in and then pushed out to where they want it to go. I don't want to do that. Uh, I don't really care for them. And the only reason they do it is because it's easy when you're working with uh, injection molding. Because the injection molding plastics, you can make it anything you want. And even though I could machine it, uh, it's just... Um, a wear and tear part that I just really don't want to deal with. So what I'm going to go instead is I'm going to make uh, valves that are going to work off of some quarter inch steel ball bearings I bought. So these ball bearings, uh, depending on whether they're going to be uh, the supply end or the intake end, uh, they're going to have, again, I don't want to get, it's going to be so much easier to explain at the end, so I think I'll, I'll leave it for that. But one, there's going to be a valve facing up and a valve facing down, and one is going to resist flow uh, for the intake, and one's going to reverse uh, resist flow for the output. And like I said, at the end, it'll be much easier to understand. So what I'm doing here now is I've drilled uh, pretty much the air feed, the standard small size. I The size of drill hole I chose was enough to give me enough meat on uh, the quarter inch I'm turning this down to. So I have about a sixteenth inch of a, wa a wall there, and that should be not narrow enough to give me any kind of friction as far as you know, airflow. So this, like I said, this is now uh, turned down a quarter inch, and I'm going to thread this. And this is going to thread into... Well, either the up or the down, depending upon uh, which of the valves this turns out to be. 
I am trying to do them all at the same time now because as these decisions are being made, uh, it is easier once things are set up to make them in pairs. Because if you remember from the first video, I had mentioned there's going to be two cylinders. Uh, they're going to be at opposite sides of the flywheel. So as one is supplying air to wherever it's going to go, the other one is uh, loading up. And then as the flywheel spins around, uh, they're going to alternate. So I need to make uh, four valves. And then there's going to be obviously two outputs and two inputs. And as I said, it's once I have the lathe all set up, it is so fast just to finish up uh, the second one at the same time instead of having to realign everything later on. And so if I'm not, I'm not going to just build one. From now on, they're all just going to be built in pairs. So what I've done here now is I turned that down a quarter inch and then I, uh, I cut it off and faced it and then I put it into the chuck and reversed it and now I'm just going to thread it. It's Brass is very easy to thread. <laughs> Funny thing is though is I made a a mistake when I was doing the second one of this. You'll see, I think I, I think I left a clip of it later on. Definitely don't do all the drilling before you do the threading. There's too much material removed that it uh, doesn't leave enough of a wall and unfortunately I snapped one off at right about this point here. So it did waste a little bit of material. But anyway, that's uh, just something I already knew, and unfortunately, because of the way things were set up, I decided just to cut a corner, and obviously I shouldn't have. So there you go, that one's threaded nicely, and you'll see right near where it fits into the chuck, uh, the very, very base of it, that part still needs to be turned down a little bit. Uh, there, they're going to do that here now, it's simply because the taps, I'm sorry, the dies I have just uh, aren't, well, they're not high quality, and they can't quite get all the way in. So I'm going to have to turn this down just so it seats properly. I'm not even sure if this is going to fit all the way into uh, the end caps, but it's just a step to do just to keep everything as neat and clear as possible. So I'm just going to cut that down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this around. And actually a lot of the, the rest of what's being done for this particular uh, part of the valve I'm going to leave off because they're all just drilling operations, so you won't really get to see how that works. What I'm going to do is, um, here you go here, they're quarter inch uh, ball bearings. So I'm going to drill with a quarter inch first, and it's going to go down to a specific depth, and then afterwards I am going to run the 3 8 in there, and that's just so that when the ball, ball uh, bearing is pushed up, as soon as it gets to a certain height, that air is going to escape around it and it's going to go and be trapped by this. This is the other end of the valve. And uh, as you see, I've already uh, cut it to size and I've got it perhaps for, like I did both of them. I drilled the hole, same hole as the other uh, side of the valve. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this end here down into, so it fits that 3 8 inch hole that I put there. And now that hole is a half inch deep. So these are going to be cut so that they are a quarter inch. So I have a quarter inch of free space that all the air can escape around. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is more than enough. So it's going to sit into here. And that is, uh, well, that's, that will be, like I said, that will be the part where the, valve, sorry, the ball bearing will no longer uh, block the air. Again, it will all become much clearer in a few minutes. As you can see, this is my process for creeping up on a dimension because I want these to be friction fit. What I'll do is I will turn down, I think I'm going at uh, two thousandths of an inch at this point, uh, and then I'll uh, test it. If it's not there, I'll move the cutting uh, tool all the way to the end, get rid of that bit like that, and then set it up for another one. You'll see shortly here, I'll switch over to uh, just taking off a thousandth at a time. And then it's just so, there you go, this is a thousandth now, just so that I don't end up taking off too much. And there you go, we're pretty much set now. And the reason I can get away with doing it this way is that extra little bit that's loose there, uh, I can turn that down. You can see it fits over that quite nicely, so I'll take off half a thou now, and then you'll, it'll, it'll fit on much nicer. And then I'll just, you can just barely see that line that's there, I will take that off uh, just uh, so that it will 
uh, I'll have nothing but uh, full friction for, for this. It is just an easy way of uh, making sure, like here I am, I'm cutting it down now to the quarter, gets rid of that, the narrower diameter, and then what I'll do next is, once I have the quarter inch like that, I will just uh, chamfer both sides just so it has, uh, well, it looks nicer and gets rid of all the extra little roughage that's on the edges, and also it helps start. All right, <clears throat> this is where it becomes obvious, hopefully. You can see the smaller quarter inch diameter hole inside. That is the seat for the ball bearing. It fits nicely down in there. So when air is being drawn from the bottom of this, it seats. And when air is being pushed up, it'll pop up into that uh, 3 8 inch hole. Now what I'm going to do here on the top part later on is I am going to put, as it's my finger there, I am going to put a... Uh, a, a groove through that so I don't end up losing, you know, because they are, the ball bearing might pop all the way to the top and be blocked. So I want to avoid that. So that's pretty much the meat of this. I'm just going to give you a demonstration now. This is all roughed out, of course. I uh, don't want to go altering these in any way, shape, or form. And I certainly didn't want to go um, building anything else for this right now. So the first clip was the air. This is in the off position so a little bit of air is escaping but there's no lubricant or anything in this at the moment and then I again there's more things that need to be done to it but as you can see uh, it prevents backflow and then the next clip will be uh, here this is the air going through in the proper direction and you'll see that it flows really nicely there we go so thank you very much for watching. If you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe and let me know what you think of this. This is beginning to come along. I think next week is going to be uh, building the flywheel. I haven't decided exactly how that's going to go yet. <laughs> for some reason I decided I want to put the, this is the proper direction for the airflow and you see there's lots of air going through and then I'm going to stick it upside down and it's going to seat in the wrong direction but this is the reason why I want to build the groove because you can still see that there's air escaping. And if I put uh, that slot in there, that won't happen anymore. So, uh, again, these are things that will become hopefully clearer. And this, the size of that cylinder there will be cut down quite a bit once I decide how I want to connect this. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.